Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the 16th week in Ordinary Time. Today is also an optional memorial of a very fascinating saint, St. Lawrence of Brindisi. He was born Caesar Rossi in the year 1559 in Brindisi in the area of uh, Naples in Italy and went on to become a very amazing part of the church at a time when clarity was really needed in the teaching and uh, the, uh, just the formation of people in their faith. He was also a great peacemaker, and I would invite you to just take a look at his uh, uh, hagiography, what they call the, the story of him as a saint. I think that it would be uh, really a blessing and a benefit to you today. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, saying, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You uh, shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are the eyes, are your eyes rather, because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's somewhat um, confusing to a lot of people uh, what Jesus is saying here about uh, speaking in parables. And there's a couple of of thoughts that that I want to share that I think will bring about some purpose and understanding to his use of parables and and why he's talking about the fact that it really is makes it a little bit more difficult for people to understand rather than speaking plainly. And uh, one of the first thoughts that I would give you is this, that what Jesus is saying to the people, you will get out of it what you put into it. In other words, uh, that there is that sense of heart for people who desire to know the Lord, who desire to know of his truths, and that using parables uh, is a way for them to be uh, introduced, but then also invite them to go more deeply into the parable in order to understand what is being said. And I think it's it's so key that, that it's an invitation to go deeper. It's an invitation to go beyond the surface of what he's saying and to go into the truths that he is trying to bring about. And so uh, parables are used in order to um, perhaps be an invitation or a measure of the interest of the heart. It isn't a matter that it's just going to be fed to you, but you need to engage the parables. You need to Uh, begin to reflect upon them and what they mean to truly get a heart of who God is. And I think that's that's a a very uh, amazing part of the use of parables and that it's a, a way for us to be invited into the deeper truths, but at the same time, we have got to invest ourselves in going deeper and to engage God at those levels of reflection and pondering upon what he's really said. So that's that's a part of it. The other part is something that I uh, uh, read in uh, the, Nav- uh, the Navarre Bible, which is a commentary, and I thought this is such a rich understanding 
of the use of parables. And uh, in there, uh, the writers talk about the fact that if we were to get the truths of God full blown, it's kind of like um, looking at something in the brilliance of the sun. And it, the brilliance and the brightness is so overwhelming that it is hard for us to really uh, be able to see unless we take and shade our eyes. We have to get a, more, a, a dimmer vision of it and look at it and study it that way in order to really see it. So, in a sense, they say that, that Jesus and using parables is basically giving to us a clearer way of looking at something that is so awesome, majestic, and overwhelming that there's no other way for us to truly ponder it uh, with our minds. It's best to view it through the lens of the parable. And that is, again, another way that uh, is interesting for us to see. And so God uh, is being revealed through the things that he has already given to us through creation. The parables take uh, ideas from what is already present in our world uh, and make it real to us. When you think of the parable of the Good Samaritan, this is a standard thing that people faced during that time of uh, having to deal with issues of being uh, robbed on, on the side of the road, which was a common occurrence in many areas of uh, Judea. But he takes that regular occurrence and uses it to express the, the love and re the redemptive action of God toward those of us who are beaten and harassed and helpless. Uh, the parable of the sower that uh, is a part of the context of our reading today, again, takes something out of agriculture that is very normal. We know that seeds are not going to grow well on rocky ground. We know that seeds are not going to grow well in other areas. And so uh, he's taking something that is very uh, clear for us to understand to talk about something spiritual, and that is the lavish love of God where he is sowing his truths in all places. But again, if your heart, if the garden of your heart, if the soil is rocky, it's not going to take root. If it's hard, it's not going to stick. If it is soft and pliable, and again, so we're talking about the quality of the soil of our heart that we condition ourselves in order to receive what God has. Well, that's just like the parable. It's going to require some work on our part to truly comprehend what God is wanting to say to us. Parables are fascinating. They are a wonderful tool uh, in the uh, use of uh, teaching uh, truths that are greater than we could possibly understand in ways that we can comprehend as we dig in. And again, what you put into it is what you'll get out of it. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, it's always good to be with you, and uh, tomorrow we will be again together for another edition of Day by Day, the Lord willing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.